People who work in film production want two main things from every film they produce. They want high production value and they want a great emotional response from viewers. The first can be achieved with proper equipment, the right budget, proper training in your craft. But the second, creating that emotion, that can be a little bit more elusive. So how, how do you create a story that stimulates a meaningful emotional response from viewers that inspires them to act? Well, in this video, I'm going to focus more on documentary film production because a majority of my work is in the documentary space, and so I'm going to center on that. So best practices for creating emotion in the documentary. So first, you have to get the story right. You have to create a narrative arc that's going to mirror the human experience. What does that mean? Well, in the edit, you need to provide context for what's happening on the screen. Think about how the events affected and shaped your characters. Let's let's hear from them about that. Not just what happened and when, but what did they think? How did they feel? You know, viewers want to know the why. Think about the why of it all. So you're going to be focused on vulnerability, triumph, overcoming challenges or finding connection. These are all universal themes that are going to resonate with audiences. So focus on authentic human experiences. But to do that, you have to structure your edit for emotional impact. It's not just about what you say, but how you say it. Structuring your story strategically amplifies its emotional impact. So don't feel like you always have to go into your edit, uh, you know, putting things in your sequence chronologically. You want to think story. Start with a hook, something that grabs attention and sparks curiosity. You're going to build tension through conflict, introducing challenges and other obstacles. Offer a glimmer of hope, you know, a turning point that shows the possibility of overcoming. And then finally deliver a satisfying resolution. Or maybe it's not satisfying. Maybe there are some loose ends that are that are not tied up together in a neat bow. But whatever, whatever you do, it's going to leave your viewer changed and connected to your, to your characters. Another way to build emotion in your documentary edit is to listen and look for those aha moments. Look for those pauses, uh, the shifts in tone, maybe a tear. You know, that's where the vulnerability peeks through, where genuine emotion lives. Also, don't shy away from silences in your edit. You know, they can be incredibly powerful in allowing them the emotion to linger a little bit longer. So if a particular moment in your documentary really impacted your interview subject, let's see them on screen. How did that affect them? Also think about the power of the authentic voice. Forget scripted perfection. You know, real emotions come alive in those uh, unscripted moments. So this will have to take place during this shoot. But when you sit your interview subject down, you want, you want to encourage them to speak from the heart to share personal stories, you know, to show, not just tell. Uh, encourage them. Let them know it's a conversation. Try not to let them prepare their answers ahead of time, which, you know, that can be difficult because there are some people who get very nervous on camera. They want to make sure that they sound perfect, but you want to make sure that they kind of steer away from that because authenticity is contagious. If, if the subject connects with you, they're going to connect with the camera, and they're going to connect with your audience, and the audience sees them as a, as a real individual. Also think about how you're going to marry the, the B-roll imagery with the words your interview subject is, is speaking. Because word choice matters. You know, find language that evokes, that paints vivid pictures, that sparks connections. Don't be afraid to be poetic, to use metaphors or, you know, to tap into sensory details. You want to let your audience, you know, feel the rain on their skin or the warmth of a shared laugh. You can accomplish this in the edit by avoiding uh, what we call see and say imagery. You know, uh, you want to think more strategically about your B-roll. Uh, how might your image choices, you know, metaphorically reflect an emotion or a feeling? So when you're selecting those sound bites, listen for hyperbole. Listen for those comparison statements from your subjects. You know, phrases that start off with, I just felt as though, or it was just like, and then, you know, fill in the blank. Listen for the specifics, moments when the interview subject really paints a mental picture of what's happening at that moment, you know, when they describe the sounds, the sights, uh, the smells, the feelings, you know, that stuff is great for building emotion in your edit. Malcolm Gladwell in his podcast, Revisionist History, explored this exact same idea in an episode uh, he posted a few years ago called The King of Tears. It's worth a listen, and I'll link to it in the description below. When it comes time to place music into your edit, you know, it isn't just the background noise. You know, it's 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 what uh, it's that emotional um, support system it really really elevates the story. Really try to find music that complements that emotional arc. 
Don't just lay down one track and let it go throughout the entire story. Look for the highs and the lows. So you're going to have to spend some time in the stock music library catalog. You know, you're going you're to have to take that deep dive. And also, don't underestimate humor. You know, laughter is a powerful emotion and a well-placed comedic moment can provide a break in the tension and create a uh, more well-balanced, rounded story. And it can create a more positive emotional connection with your audience towards the story and the characters. So these are just a few ideas of how you can improve the, the emotion in your next documentary project. As always, if there's anything that you want to tell me about, things that have worked for you, some other advice and tips to share, do so in the comments. Uh, you can connect with me at linktree.com slash Clint Till. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.